So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Arya, something seems a little bit different in this video than it does in the end of the last one. What happened? Well, you're right, I did get a haircut. Thank you for noticing. But other things have also changed. Like, I built a table for my CNC machine. Why didn't I record that? Well, it was my first time doing woodworking and I kind of sucked at it. It turned out really well, it took me a long time and from now on I'll record everything. So I kind of like this flash forward before we flash back to the build vlog because I think it's really helpful for you to get a sense of what I'm working on and where it goes on the machine. For instance, in part one, we worked on the Y-beams and we worked on how the Y-beams fit together in the main holes. What we didn't go over is the rollers or any of the mounted parts or any of the hardware that goes on top of those Y-beams. So I think it's important that we talk about it and you can see what it looks like now. As you can see, the Y-beams are assembled onto the main frame. We got the X, uh, the Z X gantry on there and we got the uh, Z-axis mounted. So Z-axis is gonna be part three, but at the end of this video, end of part two, we should hopefully have the frame mounted together. We should have the all the hardware on the Y-axis. We'll have the rollers installed, which as you can see back here, I'll maybe move this so you can take a little look. We'll have these uh, rollers installed. I think I'll put the Z-axis in part three because it might be a little lengthy. Um, looking ahead, what do we have left right now uh, at the end of part one or where I'm right now? I gotta put the belts on, I gotta put all the, um, I gotta put the spindle on, I gotta modify the spindle, I gotta do all the water cooling, and I gotta do all the electronics. I'm a bit terrified of the electronics. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm <laughs> kind of learning as I go along. So hopefully it goes all uh, pretty well. Um, I'm using the Discord to help me figure this all out. You're gonna come along this journey with me. So I don't wanna de-emphasize how many errors I made along the way. I know you guys are looking at kind of a crisp, clean, hopefully looking finished product uh, somewhat. Um, but I do wanna mention that this, there were a lot of errors that I kind of hit along the way and things I had to troubleshoot through. Um, for instance, one thing I'll mention because it's important for this video as you're doing your build, I would be really careful for lining up the hardware and the printed parts on your Y-beams to make sure that you're taking a lot of care to make sure things are lining up properly. One thing that I ran into is for my motor mounts that are made of plastic right now, I didn't align the holes properly on some of them. So what happened was when I went to put the motor on, as you can see, I'll do this one. When I went to put the motor on, it wouldn't fit into the hole at all and wouldn't line up with this, um, with this uh, ball screw. So what I had to end up doing is I used a bigger, um, a bigger bit. Uh, I think I used six or six and a half, and I drilled out the holes a little bit bigger so I had a little bit of play. And then I was able to move it around a little bit and line it up properly, and so now it fits in perfectly. The next issue I ran into that I wanted to mention and talk about is it's really important when you're building your frame to make sure that everything is square. What that means is you want this Y-beam on this side to be lined up as perfectly as you can with this Y-beam on this side. What that means is you want to make sure that the holes you're drilling between that connect your Y-beam to your X-beams uh, are as square as you possibly can get, and I cannot stress this enough. You do have a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, that's why you oversize some of the holes to make sure that they, you have that room. For me, when I went to measure how square they were, and the way you do that is really clever, what I did is I took, um, I took a tape measure from the end of one of the Y beams over there in the corner and measured this diagonal, and I measured that diagonal as well. So when you measure those two diagonals, if your machine was square, they would be the same. When I first measured mine, mine was off by, I think, by four or five centimeters, which is a huge margin of error. Um, and is not acceptable for squareness of your frame. Luckily, uh, and that's partly because I had messed up some of the hole drilling. Luckily for me, I guess two wrongs made, made it right. I was able to move some of the X, frame, uh, X beams around. And when I measured again, my squareness is off by I think two millimeters, uh, or I think actually point something millimeters. Um, either way, it's more than enough to be considered square and for our purposes is totally fine. Um, I'll get the actual dimensions of how far I'm off uh, exactly and put them in uh, the description or I'll put them in the video right here just so you can know exactly how far mine off is and you can kind of tell. The guidance in the Discord is roughly anywhere from you know one or a couple millimeters, you'll be okay. Um, anything more than that, like in centimeters range, you're gonna wanna re uh, reposition everything and make sure you're fully square. The next issue I ran into that I wanna talk about and I'll mention this again in the video, when you're mounting your gantry on the rollers to drill those holes, make sure please that you line all the holes up. I didn't, so on this end of my gantry of the four or five holes, 
uh, I got four in on this side, but on this side I got three and a half. So what do three and a half mean? Three and a half means that three of the holes are, well, three of the screws are going in all the way, and my final screw is kind of sticking up at an angle. Um, it's not a really big deal. I measured the different sides and I measured every, all the consistency and it's totally fine. Um, I could fix it and I probably will later on. I don't want to deal with it right now, so I'm going to kind of ignore it and let it ride. With all that said, uh, let's go back in time yet again and go through how we got to this point here today. All right, you ready? Let's do it. First thing we're going to start with are the Y rollers. I label these with masking tape. This made it easier to protect the paint job and to make sure you kept straight which one is which side. That way you don't drill them incorrectly. Uh, I used the printed guides to punch all the holes. I think it was tool four and five for the top and bottom of them. After this is done, you're going to want to drill them out and tap them. I do want to take this time again just to tell you how much I love tapping and people in the Discord think I'm crazy for that, but I absolutely love it. Um, I also want to make a note here to make sure with everything else that you're taking a lot of extra care to make sure you're drilling everything properly and accurately as possible. This saves yourself a lot of time later on. I also wanted to point out that the large center hole in the middle of the roller is not really needed. The joke in the Discord is that it's kind of a vestigial tail type of deal. You don't really need it, but every build ends up having one and it's kind of a remnant of an older era of print and see. Once you are done with that part, you can mount your carriages to the rollers. Make sure you clean and realign the wipers on the carriages before uh, you fully assemble everything. I'll go over this in a future video if people really want this. Um, but essentially it's pretty simple. All you got to do is you just dunk them fully in alcohol and get rid of all that packing grease that they, that they ship with. And then after that you can put them on your linear rails and see if they ride pretty smoothly or not. If they don't, what you can do is you can loosen the wipers on either side, kind of move it along and adjust it, and then retighten it. That way you can realign everything properly. And that's what I did with mine and it really helped. The next step is to assemble the ball screw assembly. Uh, this consists of the ball screw itself and the BKM BF blocks. Uh, be careful when you put on your BKM BF blocks. Mine were a little bit tight, so I had to use a mallet to just give it some love taps. You want to really be gentle with this. If you do it too hard, you will dislodge the bearing in there, and they are usually lined up straight, so it will throw it out of alignment. After I finished the roller assembly, I decided to tap the BK and BF mounts, which was super easy since PLA is a soft plastic. I'm not sure this is necessary for you guys to do. I did it because I didn't want to worry about trying to screw into an unthreaded hole and cracking the plastic. I'll also mention that you should probably take care the direction that you're mounting these rollers on. There is a proper orientation. Uh, you want them both to be the same way just for simplicity's sake. I messed this up. It's not a huge deal. You just got to take it off and put it back on the proper direction. Once you are comfortable with the alignment, you can go ahead and bolt these down to your Y frame. I tightened this in an X pattern to make sure I didn't over tighten one side and put a lot of pressure on it. Also, I forgot to mention, if you have two by three steel tubing like I do, you're gonna wanna put your ball screw through the roller before you put on the end blocks. Uh, I didn't do that and therefore it wouldn't fit at all. So I had to go ahead and take off one of the end blocks and put it through the roller and then put the end block back on. Here you can see what I was talking about when I said that it wouldn't fit through the roller. Again, tapping it with a mallet should be super light and careful. Uh, I've also seen some people have some issues with the assembly being too long or too short. You can just adjust the placement of the blocks forward and back. Luckily I didn't have to do this and mine fit actually perfectly. So this is the coupling that connects the ball screw to the motor. The advice I got on the Discord was to leave a couple millimeters between the end of the ball screw shaft and the motor shaft start within the coupling. You don't want them to be touching, just to leave a couple millimeters in, in the middle there. The screws for the couplings are super tiny, so be sure not to lose them. I lost one and it took a couple hours with a magnet running across the floor of my garage to find it. To align the motor mounts, 
what I did is I put the motor shaft into the coupling, aligned it, and then used masking tape to hold it in that position while I marked the holes with a, with a drill bit. You might notice that the printed parts I'm using aren't the most up-to-date design in the Fusion assembly. That's because the new ones came out after I'd already printed everything. I didn't want to go back and reprint everything. I will be eventually milling these out of aluminum anyway, so I'm not too worried about having the older versions. And I know you're concerned, but don't worry about it. I'm going to be powder coating or anodizing them and keeping this bright McLaren orange color scheme that I like. After center punching and drilling, it's more tapping. I think it's at this point where people are starting to realize that I might be crazy for hand tapping, but again, I absolutely love it. Make sure the distance from the block to the motor mount is consistent between both your beams and take care to align the holes of the motor mount and make sure that they're straight. If you mess this up like I did, you can drill the plastic to oversize the holes in the mount to keep them aligned. I had to do this and it wasn't a big deal like I described in the beginning of the video. After you are done, you can attach your Y beams to the X beam and get going on your X gantry. The printed part here is super helpful. Again, make sure you're as accurate as you can. I wasn't and the result was a misaligned holes on my X gantry. This wasn't a big deal, only two of them were misaligned and I'll show you a picture of that later on in the next video, I think. I went ahead and skipped the part of me measuring the squareness of my frame. This was because mine was horribly out of square by about three centimeters. It took me some time to figure out. I switched two of the beams, the first forward one and the last back one around, and that allowed me to have a square frame of being about two millimeters off, which is acceptable. I did a final check of the distance between the blocks and the motors, uh, just to make sure that it was consistent before locking in the mounting for my X gantry. Uh, you want to center the rail as much as you can on the X gantry so you can maximize the usable travel of your carriages. There isn't really a set amount of where you should put this because some people might get their X gantry longer to make it easier to mount the cable chains. Mine was just a standard build. I didn't extend it any longer, so I just try to center it as best I could to maximize that, that travel. I think I'm going to end the video here. I know we didn't get to the hardware of the X gantry, but I promise in part three we'll finish the gantry and we will get to the Z axis, which is the fun part. I also will be finally revealing the super cool cosmetic things that I've added to my build to spice it up. If you're following along in the Discord, you'll probably see me hinting at these things, so uh, look forward to that in part three. Thank you guys so much for watching and coming along this journey with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you all next time.